scales. Don't you just love them? So here's the thing. If you have really great technical command over your instrument and you practice your scales, your arpeggios, your exercises, your double stops every day, over a period of weeks and months and then years, your technique will develop and you will gain much greater command over your instrument, which means that you will have the freedom to musically express yourself. So you won't need to think about that third or that octave or even just the geography of the instrument. So in today's tutorial, we are going to look at creative ways of practicing those scales. It's really important to always listen to your sound, to never go on automatic pilot and to take time to think. In fact, more time should be spent just thinking about the sound you want, thinking about how you can create it and then going into your laboratory, which is your practice room and experiment. So here's the thing, it doesn't actually matter what system you're using, whether you're using the Galamian system of scales, whether you're using the Carl Flesch system, whether you're using ABRSM, whether you're using Trinity, whether you're using Barbara Barbara scales, you can be creative and you can use these just simply as a sort of template and then create a way to work at them that is going to support your learning. So what we're going to do today in this tutorial is I'm going to share with you just some ways that you can work on those scales to develop various aspects of your technique. So we're going to start off with the basic A major scale and I'm going to demonstrate to you the Galamian scale with a rhythmic acceleration. The beauty of the rhythmic acceleration is that you learn to go from slow to very fast and this principle is applicable to anything that you're working on. The idea that you start at a very slow tempo and gradually build up the speed. So A major. So step one in scales is of course, being able to just play it very legato and listen for a beautiful singing sound, listen for pure intonation, listening for really smooth, floaty, gliding shifts, making sure the left hand, the fingers are even and are following a sense of pulse and also that you're connecting one note to the next. And we're going to be taking it at around crotchet, which is quarter note equals 60. I'm going to try to make sure that I divide my bow evenly, but I'm also going to make sure that there's a sense of flow to the bowing. So that's, I'm going to make sure that there's a start to each note that helps to release any tension build up in the left hand. So here is A major scale.
let's look at some of the strokes we've spoken about. So do you remember Collé? We did it in the warm-up video with the pencil and then I suggested you try it with the bow. So I would suggest that first you start with the up bow, it's much easier than the down bow. You would place the bow in the middle because it's easier doing it in the middle at the start than right at the heel. And you're going to use long fingers and you're going to bend them. And when you bend them, the, you, so you place the bow on the string, when you bend them, the bow sort of pops off and you pinch the string almost. And again, place and place and place and place and place and then you would do it with the down bow so once you're feeling comfortable with that and don't rush it you know it may take it's a little bit like riding a bike it may take a few days may take a week may take two weeks okay and then we do the down bow again placing in the middle so for the down bow all fingers are nice and curved and we're going to go to long so and 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 once you're comfortable with that then you can do down up so once that's secure at the heel of the bow then you gradually move up the bow so you do it in different parts of the bow so you can do it at the heel then in the just above the heel then in the middle then just above the middle and then at the tip and then you can use whole bow so you go like we spoke about grasshoppers do you remember the grasshopper so once you've got that mastered i've got one more for you start up bow at the heel and down bow at the point so up bow at the heel down bow at the point up bow at the heel down bow at the point up bow at the heel up bow down bow etc that's calling Then you can do it martelet going to detaché. Do you remember the martelet stroke? It's a fantastic stroke for developing sound and developing the right hand technique and detaché. So you would do it starting in the middle of the bow, uh, right to the tip, uh, gradually it crotchety equals like 60, and then move to quavers, uh, still martelet, and then move to the triplets where you would gradually move on to a detaché. So if I just show you very quickly, um, I won't use the turn, I'll just do single notes for this one. So. <laughs> do the same thing in the lower half so I would use heel to middle so same going right from the heel to right from the heel to the middle and then again gradually increase the speed and then whole bow martelet so you place the bow at the heel go right to the tip right to the heel right to the tip um etc that one you can't obviously increase the speed uh, so rapidly but um, that's useful ways remember when you're doing the martelet to really listen for the release listen for the resonance in the tone and make sure that everything stays nice and relaxed so staccato bowing a relative of the martelet when you do it slowly so you would do two notes and you would use the, the same sort of bowing that I suggested in the start with the um, very basic legato uh, 
um, bowing of the A major scale. So that's two notes to a bow, then four, then six, then eight. Always stop when your hand gets tired and remember pain is not normal. So if you are feeling pain, then you need to uh, identify why the pain is there. Speak to your teacher or just have a look at what you're doing. Sometimes it's useful even to just look in the mirror um, because you, you work with yourself hopefully 365 days of the year. And you will see your teacher, I don't know how many times. Do you see your teacher twice a week or do you see once a week, whatever. You see yourself and you work with yourself more times than your teacher. So it is your job to take care of your playing. So look in front of the mirror, it's very useful so that you can see exactly what you're doing and make sure that everything remains soft. So let's just take very quickly um, the staccato bowing in the scale. So if you start with two notes, you would want to think of it as two martelet strokes. So right to the tip, right to the heel. Then you would want to divide into four. So one, turn at the start because when I'm increasing the speed it just makes it that much um, more uh, rhythmically um, accurate and easier to to divide always falling on the the tonic so and then going into six so <coughs> what's important then gradually increase the speed again all like all of these bowings if you work in them every day gradually they and you listen and be guided by your ear and make sure that everything is free they will they will improve especially over time so that is the staccato bowing so then you can try spiccato so keeping the hand really soft again if you just drop the bow on the string, this is a great way to feel this spiccato stroke. And then try much lower. Here it doesn't bounce gradually. And then the higher up you go, the faster it bounces. Do you see that? So once you've done that, you would just add a little bit of length to it. So you drop and lift off. Drop, lift off. And then gradually, once you're comfortable with these very basic motions, then you can gradually apply it. So you would do um, maybe four notes, four strokes per note. So gradually increase the speed and as you start to to um, get a good feel for that natural bounce of the bow, you'll be able to gradually refine the stroke, but don't rush the process. So gradually. And then you can do triplets. Two notes. And then gradually to one. So that's Bicato. The next stroke is really fun, the ricochet in the scale. So you just drop the bow on. So again, it's a little bit like we did for the spiccato, just dropping. So you tip off with the pinky. See my index finger is coming off. Do you remember that exercise that I showed you at the start about sound? So there, and you drop. Okay, and then what you would do is just do two and take it off. And then three. And don't rush, you will get it. If you remain patient and persistent, you will get it. 
and then you can do four so once you're comfortable just with that then you can apply it to the scale so if I do two so I'm going to add an up bow so I'm going to do again as you get familiar with the feel of the stroke and that your hand is soft then you'll gradually be able to do it faster using less motion so it would just come from the hand so and triplets Crochet. So once you're comfortable with those strokes, come up with more, you know, whatever it is you're playing. So if it's you're struggling with um, two slow, two separate, apply it to your scale. So you can do middle to upper half, so two separate, two slow. Three slurred, one separate. One separate, three slurred. And then you can do it using whole bows. So two slurred, two separate. Two separate, two slurred. And this is where you can have lots of fun because you can really sort of explore all the possibilities, all the different sounds, all the different strokes um, on the scale. And that's where you're sort of in your laboratory experimenting and experimenting with all different sounds. So the other um, stroke I touched on was sans fi, and that was the very slow bow. Do you remember? And I suggested there were two etudes that are particularly useful for this and that is the Kaiser number two which is opus 20 and um, the international edition of Kreutzer uh, etudes it's number one in that and these are very useful but you can as well develop your sound on scales so by varying the dynamics so do you remember we had those crescendis to the point in the talus you can do that in your scales and the diminuendo and if you if you work on these different dynamic changes in your scales it will help you develop your sound and you will be able to apply them to your pieces just naturally you will you will have this ability to create these um, huge dynamic contrasts So do you remember some of the rhythms we spoke about in the Paganini? These are totally applicable to your scales. So the dotted rhythms, that was this one. Opposite. Staying on the first note. Second. Staying on the third. exercises remember you need to take the time to really listen making sure that whatever note it is you're staying on it's beautifully and perfectly in tune that the sound is resonating and filled with vibrations and that the notes that follow you play with a very light touch as light as possible and active so I also suggested that you practice them using separate bows. So in the dotted rhythms, it would be an opposite. So you could, would do this in various parts of the bow, starting down bow and then up bow and then link them in. So and this is the bowing we have in the caprice. So that you can really practice again, making sure that you practice every um, part of the bow right at the heel where it's uncomfortable. Right at the tip. Then here, then here, then here. Um, and then 
the same with the the other so you can practice <laughs> Basically, you want to be as creative and exploratory as, as possible. So that is the rhythms, basic rhythms. Now let's look at some more interesting rhythms. So I've given you ideas for different bowings and different rhythms and scales. And of course, there is, it's infinite. You can be as creative and you should be as creative as possible. Remember, you don't always need to start the scale at the bottom. Take it from the top. coming down which is a very different feeling to going up moving on to the arpeggios if you have access to a keyboard a really fantastic way to work on intonation in um, arpeggios and this is actually applicable to scales is just simply by playing the chord on the piano and holding it down so if you can hold it down and then making sure that all the notes you play in the arpeggio fit in to that, those harmonies. So that doesn't fit in, you see? And you can do that. So when it fits in, that fits in. That doesn't fit in. So you want to make sure that the notes you play really sort of don't stick out in that that sort of um, sound in your head. Then I would work just the shift. So depending on what fingering you're using, you can just take the shift, which is basically the horizontal motion of the arpeggio. So if I shift up on to fourth position, yeah. Making sure they're very smooth. Then I would repeat the note before the shift. So repeat the note before the shift. Because these horizontal motions, making sure that they're as fluid as possible or essential. Have a look when um, somebody like David Oistrak is playing. Sometimes when he's doing a very fast passage, it almost looks like his hand doesn't stop. So. For instance, if I take a four octave scale and I do it very fast, so. Or if I do move up the way. I'm exaggerating, but, but you can see how it moves up very smoothly. The same is with the arpeggio. So if I take four octaves, you see the words? It floats up and down, floats up and down. So if you take just that motion, that horizontal motion, and really feel that you've got it floating over the fingerboard, and then you apply the other notes, it's a great way to uh, release the hand and release any tension of build up. Also, I would then take just the double stop. So if I take the... If I take four out of... And you would repeat again. So 
that I feel how simple it is. And then you... <laughs> It, it makes it much easier. So remember, there are an infinite number of ways that you can practice scales. I've just shared with you a tiny, tiny handful. Now you can go into that, your laboratory, your practice room, and be creative. The more creative you are, and the more you explore your instrument, the better equipped you will be. Always be guided by your ear and always take time to think in your work about what it is you need to achieve. Never doubt yourself. Remember the two Ps, patience and persistence. And if it doesn't work on the 19th time, I'm sure it's gonna work on the 20th.